Whenever I juggle machetes, which I did last week at the parish picnic, I always tell people it's the easiest way to get the stigmata without being canonized. So today we honor somebody who truly had the stigmata, the wounds of Christ in his hands and feet for 50 years. St. Padre Pio, the most remarkable saint of the, of probably in the history of the church, certainly of the 20th century, born in 1887 in a little town on the outside of outskirts of Naples, Italy, one of eight children, five of them survived into adulthood. His mother and father and grandparents were all illiterate. They couldn't either read or write, but they managed the farm and they learned the faith by going to daily mass and listening to the homilies and to the gospels. And they passed on their faith to their young child. His name was Francesco, named after St. Francis of Assisi. Later on, when he became a Franciscan, he took the name Pius or Pio after the great St. Pius V, the Rosary Pope, who helped win the Battle of Lepanto against the Turks. And so he, as a young boy, was very devout, very prayerful. He could not stand if any of his other young people would use God's name in vain or use swear words. He would be very offended by that. He could even speak to him and see his guardian angel from the young age of five and speak to our Lord and Our Lady. He probably had visions of them. One night his parents went into his room. They found him sleeping not in his bed but on the floor and using a pillow, uh, his rock as a pillow. When he, at the age of 10, he met a Franciscan with a big beard and he said, that's what I want to be when I grow up, a Franciscan with a big beard. That was important to him. So he was able to enter the seminary at the age of 15, thanks to his father, who was able to go to Brazil and send money back and then come to America and send money back to, so that um, Francesco could be tutored in order to be able to enter the seminary. He then was called Brother Pio for a number of years until he became a priest at the age of 23. At the age of 31, he was praying before a crucifix, and there the wounds of Christ in his hands and feet appeared on his body. He was unconscious. They, they, brothers found him in the chapel and called in the medical doctors to examine him, and he, he had these wounds on his hands and feet. And his whole life, he actually had very poor health, even as a young boy. He had uh, tuberculosis, and he had migraine headaches, most of his life, and he truly became what we call a victim soul, always offering up his sufferings for the salvation of souls and especially also for the souls in purgatory. They say he became a living crucifix. When he said mass, they made a little chair for him so he could sit there because he could not stand on the wounds in his feet for very long. And it says when he said mass, he really hung upon the cross his masses would take usually an hour and a half to two hours because of the prayer and meditation and entering into the passion of Christ. He had the most rem remarkable gifts, being able to hear confessions 10 to 15 hours a day, be able to read souls. If somebody came into confession and was hiding their sins, he would remind them of their sins. He could read their souls to see if they were truly sorrowful and repentant of their sins. He could bilocate, which means being in two places at once. On one occasion, <clears throat> one of the brothers went into his cell and found Padre Pio covered in snow because at that point he was hearing a dying man's confession on the Italian Alps. Another time, it was reported that even though he was at the monastery, he was seen pulling a drowning boy out of the lake two hours away. So a remarkable gift of bilocation. Wouldn't that be great, be able to say mass and be on the golf course at the same time? Imagine that bilocation. He also could levitate. <clears throat> there were countless stories of when American airmen were sent over to bomb certain cities in Italy. Padre Pio would appear outside the plane, you know, thousands of feet in the air, shaking his finger at them, telling them not to bomb a particular city. Sometimes he was seen huge, like 30 stories tall, and would not allow the bombs to be dropped on these Italian vi villages and churches. He also had the gift of prophecy. 
A young Polish seminarian visited him back in the 1950s, and Padre Pio told him that one day he would be raised to the highest ranks of the church, and that was St. John Paul II, who would become cardinal and then pope. Padre Pio also had the understanding of foreign languages when he was hearing confessions. He worked countless healings and miracles. God worked miracles, raising people from the dead and healing countless individuals. One young girl named Jenna. Gemma was born without pupils in her eyes. Padre Pio blessed her. She was able to see perfectly for the rest of her life. The eye doctors couldn't understand it because she could see perfectly even without any pupils in her eyes. So he would live this way for 50 years, spending 10, 15 hours a day hearing confessions, saying mass, praying for the sick. He founded a hospital in San Giovanni Rotondo, the house for the relief of suffering. That's still one of the finest hospitals in Italy today. He died at the age of 81. And he said, if you want to become a saint, do these things. Be especially devoted to our Blessed Mother. Pray your rosary every day. Practice daily prayer and mental prayer. Do good spiritual reading. Go to daily mass, if at all possible, and go to regular confession. They said, then you too could become a saint. Of course, I love his famous quote, pray, hope, and don't worry. We especially need that in our world today. Pray, hope, and don't worry. I'll give you a blessing with the first class relic of St. Padre Pio, certainly one of the greatest and most remarkable saints in church history. Many diabolical attacks on his life as well. But God would preserve him to be the great saint he is today. And it seems that his body is incorrupt and 20 million people visit his tomb each year. Through the intercession of St. Padre Pio, may Almighty God bless you. May he become your spiritual father in the faith. In the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit, amen. St. Padre Pio, pray for us.